the sooner we get started, maybe the sooner we can all head home once all questions are answered. And what I'll usually like to do is go around and have everybody introduce themselves and tell us the one thing you want to get out of this meeting tonight. Well, I'll write it down to make sure that we try to, to do it. I'm Jan Olson, um, Chair of Planning, and these guys can all start introducing themselves. And I'm John McCullough, I'm on Planning. He's our map guru, by the way, so we do a lot of, rely on him for mapping. I'm Melanie Keene on the Planning Commission. I'm taking notes tonight. I get some good comments from everybody. I'm Ben Bayshore. I'm here you know, just to learn as much as I can. Okay. This particular event. I'm Jane English, and I've already said the question that I have. My sense is shoreland should drain into the body of water, not away from it. <laughs> Denise Wheeler, Select Board Machine Learning, here to learn. Scott Bassett, Citizen. I'm here to try to understand why the town has to deal with this junk and not the state. So I'd expect answers. <laughs> <laughs> came up and we dealt with it at Curtis Pond, we, yeah. uh, we aligned our zoning regs so they were absolutely in tune with the state. <laughs> and that went down in flames. They weren't restrictive enough, at least not for the people at Curtis. So that's why we're here looking at another version. <laughs> uh, I'm Larry Bush. I, uh, I live on Bliss Pond. I'm on the uh, Conservation Commission and the, the Cowes Lakes and Streams Committee. I'm sort of here just to report back to my bosses. <laughs> okay. Bill Davis, much as it pains me, I agree with Scott. <laughs> Somebody write that down. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Terrence Reed, and this is, for me, this is uh, sort of just first foray into understanding what's going on with the late French. So I have a specific question I'm here to just soak up as much information as I can. We'll, we'll, we'll give you information. I don't know. We'll see. Great. I'm Arlen Berkeley, uh, Cal's resident. Mm -hmm. uh, interested in knowing what's different from the state regulations and why there need to be differences from the state regulations. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bob Martin, I'm a spy from Woodbury. Oh, geez. I'm the zoning administrator and investor there. Oh, good. My sister wrote the new uh, zoning regs for Cabot. Okay. Most of it. Did she start you, from ground zero? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Can you turn the heat down a little bit? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I had 16. it up pretty high because there was only 50 in here when I first walked in. So. And um, you do know that John and I are listers, too. So, I mean, planning and listing goes so well together. And I'm sorry. And Joe is the Yeah, if you're going to do any enforcement. Yeah, yeah, well. You don't know what we find as we do inspections as listers. Hmm. I got a story. <laughs> okay. That's another day. Mm -hmm. I'm Susan Martin, his better half, and I'm here representing uh, the Woodbury Lake Association. I'm its president, and I just would like some information to take back uh, to the members at our spring meeting in June. Great. Leslie Fitch, and uh, just wanting to know what the changes are and um, what um, actual concerns they're intended to address. Okay. Randy Fitch, email harassment. Peggy <laughs> 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 Bowen, I'm the DRB board chairman. So I need to know what they're doing. Okay. <laughs> well, welcome all. And uh, well, what we thought we'd do is I have a brief uh, PowerPoint presentation to kind of like do the overall. Um, 
John has the maps, and sometimes what we've learned in doing this work of, is that a map speaks a thousand words. Mm -hmm. And sometimes by seeing the visual, um, it's, it's easier to understand what we're doing. So um, with that, I put this forward. Oh, here, I want this. Um, <clears throat> the um, purpose that we started out when we started looking at what we have today with Shoreland and what we want to accomplish is basically um, protect the water habitat around the shoreland um, and preserve uh, the recreational and scenic resources that we have. So um, the current regs, and we'll be going through that a little bit, do not at all align with what the state has as state shoreland. Um, so we decided we wanted to have our regulations be more in sync with the state and not be quite so different as they are now. Um, and uh, we have um, a fair interest in our community to ha have additional protections um, to the shoreland above and beyond what the state wants. So um, what the current regulations do is it applies to all acres, all lakes and ponds that are of 20 acres. Um, Right now, we have an 800-foot boundary from mean water mark, only a 50-foot buffer. Um, the structures have to be 150 feet back, and it requires conditional use uh, for any increase in impervious surface above 10 percent. Um, we have our current regulations show that we have a maximum lot coverage of uh, about 10 percent. And um, as we learned, there are many non-complying structures and non-conforming uses around the lake, and if anything <coughs> is affected by that, it's going to go to the DRB. Within our current shoreland regulations, you can have a planned unit development on shoreland. You can have, it's a three acre minimum lot size on your shoreland. Uh, you can have single, multi-use family dwellings. And with conditional use, you could even build restaurants, bed and breakfast inns, and create uh, impervious surface within 150 feet of the lake. So we have a pretty very, right now, our shoreland is very broad um, and in no way uh, complies with what the state envisioned. So um, we've been uh, many months uh, in reviewing all of this. We looked and asked for advice from the Conservation Commission. Uh, we've had presentations from the Winooski which, uh, uh, friends, friends of Winooski River, um, a and R. Um, we've solicited information from shoreland uh, owners. Why oh, did I look over there? Um, we are great at copying, um, not copying, but we do read a lot of our neighbors regulations and we did look closely at Greensboro, Elmwood, Middlesex and Faston because a lot of them had uh, interesting Elmore. and Elmore. Yeah. Oh yeah, Elmore. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> oh, we didn't catch that. Um, and I think probably more important for us, uh, we looked at this on a parcel by parcel basis when we were reviewing this with the maps and that's why uh, it became really important for us to have accurate parcel maps. What we learned is that probably 50% of landowners along the lake have parcels that do not comply with the three acre minimum at all. So 50% of the uh, property owners around the lake are in <coughs> non-conforming lots. Which lake are we in? Pardon? Are we talking about Nelson? Or I'm talking about all lakes, lakes in general. Lake. Oh, right, 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 right. All the lakes in general. And we're, tonight, yeah, we're focusing on number 10, um, Nelson and um, Sabin or Woodbury. But it was a true at Curtis, at Bliss, well, Bliss not so much, and, and Adamant. And we'll kind of talk a little bit about Adamant in that way. So they're not conforming now. And they won't be conforming ever. Well, but they were conforming at one point. No. Right? No. So, so 
before so. zoning. I mean, uh, they, were exactly. never, they were never really well, of course. You didn't, you didn't, it makes you it didn't sound have bad. any zoning yeah, rigs. Right. Yes, you're yeah. right. All right, all right. <laughs> it makes it sound bad. Get your <laughs> point out, yes. It's a pre existing condition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't really want that up. But it, it kind of shows this was an old map that we used to look at the boundary of Nelson Pond. Um, and all these little you know, the little tiny lots that are there, those are pretty much all non-conforming. Here's Sabin Pond. And the purple on that is, is the shoreland area, and the green is rural residential. So it uh, just gives you an idea. So what we thought we would do in proposing a shoreland overlay district, which we call the Shrod, just to, I thought that was a fish. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like quite Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> um, we're going to call it that um, parcels that are near the lake. It's going to be just this. It's going to be an overlay district. And then what's going to happen is if you live in a parcel that is village district, your underlying district will be village. If you live on a parcel that is rural residential, your underlying district will be rural residential we have a few that are resource recreational so they would have two everybody two. yes you have two now denise you have two sh you are in shoreland and you are in rural residential you don't know it but you are i didn't know that yeah i knew rural residential but you also you for some reason because of the 800 foot shoreland you're in that district in shoreland district huh. as well so the stricture of the two applies even if it's village, it has to be three acres? No, we're, we're, well, gonna, cover, we're gonna cover that. Yeah. We're, we're gonna cover that. That's weird. I mean, that's one, that's one of the issues we wanna hear from you. Yeah. Um, because, um, yeah, and we'll cover that. When you see the map, you'll see it better. Um, and the stricture of the, of the two districts would apply. But in terms of it being an overlay, it's just an overlay um, of what is there So we want to apply State Shoreland Protection Act standards, which will be the same. We don't really want to duplicate what the shoreland is doing. Um, if there's any development and there is not a shoreland permit, then the owner should comply with the Calais Shoreland Overlay District. It now applies to 10 acre lakes. Remember when I said our current applies to 20 acres? Now the shoreland overlay district will cover all 10 acre lakes. So we added new lakes. Adamant Pond became added. They never before had been under shoreland. They are now going to have shoreland overlay. Um, Little Mud Pond, Sodom Pond, and Watson Pond have been added. Where's Watson? Up on Ken oh, County yeah, Road, kind of that area, north of Maple Corner. Hmm. That's our past two <laughs> Jan, the, the, the state uh, standards are 10 acres. Now yes. that's part of why. Yes. So getting it from 20 to 10 is in part we're, conforming we're with, the with the state. We're complying with the state. We're being consistent with the state. Yes. I'm trying to catch up with Woodbury because we have so many lakes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is the standard state de uh, diagram that the state uses to show a 100-foot buffer. So we're going to go from a 50-foot buffer in our overlay to a 100-foot buffer, which is state. And then the 150 feet that goes beyond that. So the total shoreland overlay district will be 250 feet from mean water mark. And what is it now? 150? No, 800 feet. 800. Well, it's actually there's three pieces to what we have now. There's a managed buffer area of 50 feet. There's a no-build zone of 150 feet. Then the edge of the shoreland district, and it's a district, not an overlay. The edge of the district is 800 feet. So the two areas where we are going to differ from the state is an impervious surface. The state's requirement is 20% impervious surface. We have for years had 10% impervious surface, and we're going to keep the callus 
10%. Um, we know that there are some people who um, would prefer that we stick with the state, but we also have a lot of people in our town that would prefer that we stick with the 10%. So right now, our proposed regulations um, would be to be a, 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 an impervious surface of 10%. In, I'm sorry, I missed what you said the state's was. 20. 20. 20. So just, <clears throat> just out of quick curiosity about the impervious surface, it seems like a huge amount of the impervious surface that actually is near in the lakes that I'm thinking of are, are public roads and or fishing access to, I mean, the roads themselves. Well, <coughs> oh, and that's the next thing that we'll. Are, are huge. Yeah, and that's our next area. thing. The state uh, and <laughs> their shoreland at roads. We are not. We are covering our shoreland overlay district will include the roads. So if a property owner has land that's across the road, like there is around, uh, there's a lot of road on number 10. We have a lot of roads that are right up to the lake. Mm -hmm. The state shoreland ends at the road. We're going to expand. If that 250 feet of shoreland overlay goes over the road, then we want best management practice. I'm relying on Melanie to keep my language accurate. <laughs> we want best man vegetative management practices that the state requires to be on that side of the road as well. So we want to instill the idea of best management vegetative management practices for our shoreland overlay that will go on either side of the road if the shoreland overlay that 250 foot mark is over the road you want to be careful how you define your roads mm -hmm. i was talking with an attorney from fort myers today that we went to the supreme court on fort case, myers florida florida mm -hmm. and this is a piece of property where there's it's easy and the budding owner mm -hmm. does not want it to happen. It hasn't gone into environmental court yet, but I think it's going to. Mm -hmm. And it's going to come down to, well, is this right away a public road use? Mm -hmm. And the Supreme Court says, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. it, it is not really, according to our thinking, it's, it's a right away to somebody's camp. But the Supreme Court says, Nope, it's a uh, it's public, considered public. Mm -hmm. So your shoreline stop. This was, uh, I think it's 70 feet, mm -hmm. 20 foot right away, and a 0.3 acre parcel that they're going to put a big house on. Mm -hmm. Well, these were not far. Yeah, in, in this is here. here in oh, it's here. Yeah. Because last I knew, we paid taxes to the side of the road. It depends on. Yeah, I think it's interesting because the state has started to instill new road um, requirements as well. Well, that's, that's yeah. actually what I was wondering. Earlier, and if there's and that modify the roads. yeah, the last um, <coughs> state planning meeting that I attended, they had a lot of information about what they were going to have the roads be. Mm -hmm. um, and right away, I. A, With our Lister mapping, I'm real touchy on what the right of ways are. Yeah. Um, it, it's kind of a problem. At, we have surveys that take out the right of way and reduce the <laughs> land because based on right of way. So I mean, there, I, I, I'm, it's a total case gray area to me. It's is really interesting because usually the parcel that somebody wants to build their, their summer, their year round on, mm -hmm. can be adjacent to and attached to the shoreline lot, mm -hmm. this one isn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a little island with two little pieces. Mm -hmm. And it's a, and a grandfathered, mm -hmm. contiguous lot. I think it'd go to our DRB. <laughs> isn't that? <laughs> um, okay, I think that's all I had, actually. Um, so you can go to your maps. You just added a bullet. I'd like you to more just uh, the strict not regulation of non-conforming lots and uses of non-conforming structures. Um, we have current regulations which we're going to keep uh, on how if, if there's a non-complying structure within the 250 foot shoreland overlay, and you decide that you're, you if somebody says I'm going to add a deck 
they're going to have to go to the state anyway. Um, and assuming that we get a state permit, I doubt that anything is going to be happening here. Um, it, but our reg stay, it still has to go to our DRB because any non-conforming change, whether vertical, horizontal, or whatever, goes to the DRB for non-complying buildings and lots. So we're, we're keeping that the same, and that's basically what that third last bullet point is. And that's as it is now? And that's as it is now. I wonder, uh, talk too much here. Yeah. Does, uh, if somebody's gonna do something on the shoreline, do you require them to get the state shoreline permit before you yes. guys will do anything? So yes. the administrator does. They, they have to. There's no, the town can't exempt anyone from state No, what I mean is they'll come, like they come to me for permits and they haven't gotten their state shoreline yet. We have, and we ask them to I'm go. I'm zoning administrator and if, and if a person needs a state permit, I tell them, and it has to go to the DRB, they get that together before you go to the DRB. So now we're going to turn it over to John, where he's got a series of maps, and um, we'll kind of talk it through. <coughs> Okay, um, focus right now on the bottom of number 10. These are the existing conditions. The, uh, the blue is obviously the water. This darker green is the 50 foot vegetative buffer that we currently have in our regs. This boundary of the green, this is 150 feet from the water, and that's basically the no build zone. And then from here to the edge, that represents the, the our shoreland district. It's not an overlay district. It's a, it's a solid district with its own standards. Um, it has a three acre minimum. It has a 10%, a 10 percent uh, maximum uh, development area, whether it's clearing or impervious surface. And because it's a real district and not an overlay, abutting districts, this yellowish kind of thing, this is rural residential, it stops at exactly the point where the shoreland picks up. The same is true of this crosshatch reddish area. This is a village district. That's North, 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 North Callis yeah. Village District. And most of the village isn't in it. So, yeah. <laughs> so if we look at that, that's village, which has no, acre, no minimum acreage requirement. Yeah, no minimum lot size, 68 feet of frontage, 10 foot side setbacks. You move up to the green, which is our shoreland district, we have a three acre minimum. 300 foot frontage. And then we have, which includes the, sh the buffer and the 150 acres. So that's what we have now. So, one of the things that's going to happen is uh, we get rid of the entire shoreland district and the, uh, yeah, let me, uh, we've got a, uh, So there's, there's our village. So what happens to village if we get rid of the shoreland district? <coughs> and what happens is, um, uh, bear with me, I'm trying to find my way through this one. Uh, proposed, okay. Okay, so there, <coughs> there's, uh, there's the new village. So what this is showing is the very dark green is the 100 foot buffer. And then combine that with the light green is your 250 foot shoreland overlay. This district was drawn so that this boundary was 400 feet from the center of the road, North Callis Road. This boundary runs right down the middle of Upper Road. Mm -hmm. and the two come together at a point here and so I just took the same 400 feet from North Callis Road and that's what gave it this ugly shape but that's village 
and everything else reverts to rural residential. So the question. The yellow is rural residential. All the yellow is rural residential. And that it remains at a three acre rural, as rural residential. The question is, do the folks who live in the North Callis Village area want to keep this as village with, uh, with the kind of um, standards that are in village district mm -hmm. so close to the lake. But it doesn't drain into the lake. No, it doesn't. Very, very but it very drains into the streams. Yeah. Everything drains into the streams. Yeah. Well, the whole, everything drains into the stream yeah. somewhere. But most of, of North Cannell's village is below the outlet. Mm -hmm. Quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Quite a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a village, sure. I think it's important for us to remember uh, there aren't too many villages that are up on the top of hills. Most of our Vermont villages are down, follow the streams, the brooks. That's where our villages are. And I was under the belief that we wanted to encourage our development in our villages and not out in the, we don't want to be encouraging the development um, and taking up agricultural land and, and building the houses all over the place. So if we want to encourage the development in our villages, then this is, this is what we need to do. I mean, obviously, you'll have the regulations in place so that they're constructed and, and, and done properly. And it's interesting in North Carolina's village, a lot, a lot of that southern part, there's old cellar holes along there houses that are falling down, but that was quite the village, I guess, at some point. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It has a good history, and, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, you had your own dairy there, as I understand yeah. it, and a cheese factory there, and a few other things that were, were going on, and a hotel, and, and it's got a wealth of history, and I look at it now, and it's like, I don't know. The other problem is a lot of that area has, do we have steep slopes there? There's, it's, the topography is I do have contours. Yeah. So we also have that to kind of consider, but yeah. So we this is what we're proposing is that that village district is that for the North Callis area. Everything else that will remain as rural residential based on what it is now. Any people like that? I think it makes sense. I did um, think about work it. with the DRB to do uh, renovation and construction in North Cal's Village. Uh, I don't know how long my mother been here? Six years? Seven years? How long mm -hmm. she's been here? Um, and I found that it worked. You know, it made sense. That the DRB was really clear that you know that we want to encourage development in the village and not sprawl, as Leslie was saying. Um, and also, you know, in terms of thinking about the uh, where we were work, where we were putting in any infrastructure, like figuring out the septic and all that, we complied with the state, and that mm -hmm. was plenty strict right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's tough in North Cow's Village because everybody's well is really close to everybody's well. It's not easy, but, um, but you know, there, I, there are good regulations in place. I have a question. If somebody's, I noticed on the previous one where you were showing the lot lines, that square that's the Bushway property, a little bit of it's in the village. Does that mean the whole of his property's in the village? or? Which property are you talking about? Um, the square, go up the square to the left, to the, oop, to the left. To the left over here? Yeah, yeah, right there, that square, that's Bushways. And so a little bit of it's in Shoreland, a little bit of it's in Village. Yeah. What happens to somebody's land that falls into a bunch of different districts? <laughs> if the development was in Village, they'd be entitled to Village standards. If the development's in rural residential, they'd be entitled to okay. that. So they can have three different sets of rules going on one piece of property. They could. Okay. Because it looks like a little tiny sliver of my land is in shoreland. But that doesn't yeah. turn everything into shoreland. You're right. Okay. You're right. Yeah. yeah. And even that, th from, from this point to this point, development is still allowed, but there are limitations on, yeah. on how much. 10%. And, there, and there's limitations to what, how much you can clear. Yeah. Okay. Um. And and again, this our our regs have it so that 
these buffers go across public roads, and the public road in this case is I white. See another, I see another question there. There's part of that green that surrounds Number 10 Pond yeah. that does not drain into Number 10 Pond, the, the, the northern section of my land. Um, yeah. What about it? Yeah, the, the part that's green, right, right or just above that, yeah. go, that section there does not drain into the pond. It drains downhill. Well, right, that, that line, the new property line that you guys put in, that's where that big line of rocks are. Yeah, right there. And that's the height of land. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I don't think that that part of my land should be considered shoreland. Well, for what it's worth, the state of Vermont does. It's in the shoreland protection area. Right now, the they don't, don't have the, anything to do with drainage in the shoreline. Not, no, but like, that's <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've got the same thing around Curtis, and and at the bottom of that. I mean, all these villages were built at the bottom of the ponds yeah. where the dams were. Because mm -hmm. that's so they, in almost every case, that's where you're going to yeah, find the existing yeah. concentrated yeah. growth. The power and the lawns. And, and the part of shoreland. It, my understanding of what the state wanted in doing shoreland had nothing to do with where the water drained. It's a matter of protecting the whole area around all of the lake in terms of keeping the habitat and the vegetative and the flora and the fauna. Mm -hmm. But it's Within already the, just lawn. So there's no, there's no vegetation to protect there because it's just lawn. <laughs> um, well, uh, that's there's some grandfathered thing about just lawn. Um, we allow it, but um, because people have kept been mowing, yeah. we don't necessarily like it. Who's we? The state. Well, you mean you know that that dark green area is considered <laughs> a no mow zone. Yeah, it's well, light buffer. green is what I'm talking about. And the light green, you know, it's, there's certain vegetative management practices that would be nice, but well, you don't need to apply for a permit. Well, I'm yeah. considering the like the Proposed regs, the shoreline buffer zone, it says you have to mow it at least once a year or it goes back to, uh, you can't mow it anymore. That's what it says right here in number six. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happens if somebody just doesn't want to go to camp for a year? And who's going to be the lawn police for that? I just, I don't, I well, don't, I don't think that makes any sense. Oh, trust me, don't. We've got lawn police in Dallas. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so can I ask about extending the buffer zone across the road and what happens to keeping the roads clear for you know the edge of the roads? Um, you know, we have some narrow roads in Calais, so and they need to they need to be cut along the sides or we're gonna have to uh, thank God for low population density, we'll have more accidents. So Right. So but what well, how does that impact it? I guess it doesn't because the, the, road, uh, the road standards, as I understand it, has whatever it is they can do on the right of way on each side of the road. Okay, so the road standards supersede the shrine. Yes, mm -hmm. and then if there's a, let's say I've got 20 feet beyond the right of way of the road that goes into my personal line and it's still within the 250 feet of shrine, that 20 feet is kind of shrine. <laughs> I mean, just to protect it a little, I guess. I know there's not much we can do about it. I'm just, just curious about whether or not the state has ever said or has any plan at all to manage the roads or even move sections of roads to, I know, I recognize the whole point of all of this work is to preserve the bodies of water, but by far the, the the most impervious surface by square footage, I mean, enormously, yeah. is the roads themselves. Yes. Right. They're, they're, I, I think um, it's fair to say they're dealing with it right now. They're yeah, they have some kind of ditching plan or the the runoff from the roads and because uh, <coughs> all the attention now is to the what is what is a roadside ditch that adequately picks up sediment and stuff when it comes off the roads. That's well, sure, and some of these, like along Nelson and along Number Ten, I mean, it just it just drops in a way. Yeah, and the plow go. blade goes by. And oh yeah. The state is, has more regulations on 
on the roads than they ever used to have with regard to um, making sure that you don't have drainage into the streams, that drain into the ponds, that drain into Lake Shore and Pine, all that mm -hmm. stuff. So I realize fully too it's really tricky. I mean, if you look at something like that one along Nelson, mm -hmm. there really isn't another place to put that. I mean, it goes straight up to 200 feet. Right. We have the same so. issue on some of the roads right. by Bliss Pond. Yeah, sure. And, um, yeah, we, we have a lot of road issues like that in Cal. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't have the answer, and this is curious if this did well, there's a lot more coming too in terms of the state stormwater permit, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Municipal yeah. roads, yeah. yeah, it's on the horizon. Mm -hmm. Municipal roads, general permit. permit, or even just best That's practice it. in terms of we'll give us which an additional direction. use wow. permit to use our roads. Yeah. The state lets us conditionally use our roads, and we have to pay a fine. Mm. Road standards supersede the trod anyway. How much are you really gaining by extending the overlay district across the road? Good question. I don't know that. Question. And it constitutes a taking of somebody else's rights. I was going to say, yeah. what is Property what is rights. the what is the it objective? Does. Absolutely. What is the objective? Because we really shouldn't be increasing regulations without a specific problem that we're trying to solve. It came up a specific, a specific portion of this came up at Bliss Pond, where we were told that surface water runoff from Sterilino's property was going right into Bliss Pond, and that surface water runoff could be in part intercepted if the vegetated buffer extended across the road and picked up some of that. That was that was one point I remember. So we beat everybody I mean, with the I same state. I was going to say, yeah, so, so the solution isn't to address that one problem. It's instead well, to, to, like... How can one, in running a town, say only one person can has to do it one way, and well, everybody else is free? only one so, person has the problem. They but I think there's on, more problems in that than we know. I think we were told about that, but I, I, I can, you know, if I were to drive up the road into by number 10 and see how many things are running off that off the land there across the road down into the lake there's a lot mm -hmm. and and I don't um, agree with you because the road's right in the way right but it but it's going across the road and into the lake so yeah, if there, there's, there's a no stoppage ditch. somewhere at the road that will stop it from uh -huh. going from the road into the lake that's yeah. what we're hoping for but well, there's no water, ditch water you know? does run down well i, mean, I know but then you then if, if the road standards go in and they start doing ditching on that other side and you start building some kind of ground cover so that that starts absorbing the water going in before it goes into the ditch, then you've stopped the water from going across the road and into the lake. That's my understanding of what they want to try to do. Sounds very reasonable to me. We have to protect our lakes. It's really important to protect our lakes and they're already facing enough other problems. If it's a matter of planting some vegetation, I don't see what the big deal is, really. I've been monitoring uh, Woodbury Lake for 40 years in the readings. And it is so interesting to see we get nice secchi desk readings of seven, six and a half, which is deep. It's a good lake. And then there'll be a gully washer, one meter. One Let's meter. just stop the rain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, well, the other problem is the roads are, are getting higher all the time. Yes. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt. I mean, where where we are, it has, what, over the last... Over the last dozen years, years the road around Nelson Pond has gone up by about 18 inches, almost two feet higher than it was a dozen years ago. I mean, and so it's, it's a, and it's a solid six feet higher than it was fifty years ago. Right. You know, where, at the town hall, the road. Yeah. The right. Yeah. Road. We just keep putting surface on it and adding and adding, which increases the problem. The problem because they're mostly fines. It's not gravel. It's sand. It's mm -hmm. yeah. Stuff that <clears throat> likes to run off. Right. What link is this, John? 
Oh, that's Woodbury. There's not very many places on that shore at all. There's one there, if somebody wants to buy a place, it's just come available for 800000 Is that all? It's a nice place. In, in, in Woodbury or Callis? It's in Callis. Really? In Callis? Yeah. yeah. What side, of, what side of the pond? John Harding's place. Okay. Oh, yeah. 800, well, 799 <laughs> That'll hurt our CLA. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a big place, though. So. You have to think of everything, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to distill some of the things that I've heard. Um, a lot of questions about why we are extending over the road and not being and following the state and stopping at the road. Um, what other issues? The lawn business. The lo okay, yeah, the um, the lawn and the mow. Okay, what well, yeah. that item number six you mentioned? Yeah. Okay. Is yeah. that is the state standard essentially the same for that? There's no standard for that. No. It's always been something that, 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 that Calus has mm -hmm. had. But what about the, 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 the 100 foot? The 100 foot buffer is considered no mow. For the state, for the state, for the state, the state as well. For the state, yeah. Okay. But that's, that's I mean. a buffer as a buffer. But I think this is something that relates to something else. Okay. That if, if you have been. If you've been mowing up there, you know, we try to, and we're saying if you don't mow there in a year, then it, then you're going to have to revert to vegetated practices. I mean, sort of in the light green area rather than no, the and even area. in the buffer, we've got people that mow. They they have a they have a thing in the buffer and they mow up to the lake. Right, but you said the state also has the same standard in the buffer, right? They have a no yes. mow buffer. Yeah, Pure, period. Ours is somewhat grandfathered if you we, yeah we've had been this mowing it then you can thing. but if you don't do it for a year then you right. can't and then and no that that's proposed right that's, that's proposed that's not what's the law now and I'm saying that to propose that is crazy that's what I'm saying I don't I don't agree with that people don't come to camp for a year and all of a sudden they can't mow their lawn anymore that doesn't make any sense to me I'm sorry people go away people have deaths in the family you might be interested to know that in Maine the realtors did some numbers on shoreline and the people that were mowing down to the shore 20 percent less than people that were doing the shore wise what the state is saying 20 percent less what selling mm -hmm. price they sold for less mm -hmm. huh. no, that's something if to you do with all the geese on the water say that again if you, if you were mowing you were, your, your, your property, property sold less. for less, less. In the state of Maine. And they've had this rate for a long time. They've had it for 40 years. Yeah. Now, I'd say we do not mow to the edge. We don't do it. We don't have grass to the edge. But I think if somebody has that, they should be able to keep doing it. Whether they're gone for, gone for a year or gone for two years, why should they lose their rights because they're not there at their own property? That's all I have to say about it. I just don't think it's right. I got a feeling that when they were starting to look at uh, at the Shoreline Protection Act as it affects properties around Lake Champlain and that area, that's probably when they ran into the road thing. People going nuts. I think it's a concession to the force in that part of the state. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know why they did it. I, all I know is that since then, they have started adding stricter standards to the roads mm -hmm. in order to affect the runoff that's going in. So they, they're slowly trying to correct what they didn't do the right the first time. Mm -hmm. So I have a question going back to the North Calix Village. There's two things that have been said that are conflicting. I was, you told me that the state standards mean that it has to be, the light green has to be shoreline, but the state standards stop at the road, so that's public not roads. true. Public roads. Public, public, public roads. roads. Right. Yeah. Well, but the AR road, our road class four road, it's a public road. That, it's that's not. actually a big question. Well, whatever, but there were some, there were some parts of it. 
So that that needs to get sorted out. Well, ownership of GAR Road, I agree with you. But right now, we found no evidence that it's a town road. Uh, the listers have found no evidence. Yeah. And I know that I know that the people who strongly feel it is a town road. And that's we the listers looked, and we finally stopped at a point. <coughs> we couldn't find any evidence that it belonged to the town. We did <laughs> find evidence that it was meant to access Memorial Hall for the purposes of people visiting that hall veterans and such, people remembering the Civil War. But uh, that was the whole reason the road was there, was access to Memorial Hall. Mm -hmm. But you do have road on there that's town road that's now in the overlay that wouldn't be, right? Because that's number 10 on road. Here's, here's a public road right here. Yeah. Is so that you can 10? see that the state stops right at the edge of this road and basically right at the water's edge here. And this is North Callis Road. So it would stop, there. stop right along North Callis Road. Mm -hmm. So how far up Foster Hill is that? Um, I'm sorry. But you're saying under the new, there we go. new change. Uh, at that, that, no that point there. there. It would no longer is stop. Right. right, if we, no, it's not in the middle. You had, <laughs> you had one that showed uh, what the state was. Yeah, I was looking for it on this. I don't know if I have the state on this. But it would <laughs> stop at those public roads. And so that's right. the question is whether people feel pro or con on that. Um, whether it should track the state and stop the public roads or. Okay, uh, here, I'll turn on the state. So that's where go. the state is. Here's the state. That's the state shoreland. And then not on the other side of number 10 because it's a road. That's right. a public, right. road. public road. So you have no yeah, protection at all. Of anything. Same thing with Nelson. And there's Nelson Pond. So it sounds like. So that's the state shoreland regulation as it is stated today. Yeah, you know, unless the state comes down and, like you were saying, they're looking at a, at someone's right of way, treating that as a public road. If they come out with with something definite. I'm sorry, I can't hear you, John, because he's got you in. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, John. Did you say that? Well, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Bob Martin. Oh, Bob. Bob Martin. Yeah. Um, you said that the state Supreme Court is looking at a private road. I think this was, a, this was a federal and, Supreme Court yeah. decision, I think. The attorney was the way he was talking. So if they decide that a private road is a public road, then, yeah. then that changes this whole thing as far as the Shoreland Protection Act goes. Actually, but, but actually, the Shoreland covers private roads on the state. What we're showing here, we have these are class four and class three roads, which are public roads. Yeah, I know, but if so a court says that those class four roads and private roads are quote public roads, that changes the whole shape of this state. I don't, I don't right. think he's going to get away with it. I hope not. Can you, can you zoom wow. out on North Callis from the, from the on the North Callis village from the, the, the current state? Down here. Yeah. What parcel? Why, why is that? Why is that yeah, right? Because right. I, I clicked on someone's parcel. Oh. Click on someone else there. <laughs> I would say with the small representation of the town that we have here and at any meeting, um, what needs to happen is, uh, I know it's an expense, but an informational um, handout be sent to every taxpayer with um, uh, concerns for our lakes, with the state guidelines outlined and the proposed town um, guidelines and to discuss getting the vegetation that's needed we would need um, you know natural plants for this area to the lake shore that would be beneficial to the wildlife and to even the landowners if there could be berries or something picked and make a fund and provide this. I mean, not everyone is going to be able to afford this vegetation. Uh, I think it's a matter of, of having people understand that it's not about taking property rights away. And I don't think the town needs to take possession of a certain you know, amount of land in front of someone's property. But it's a matter of getting this vegetation, getting the information out that this is what we're trying to do and showing the advantages of having this vegetation and the advantages of not mowing, encourage not mowing. I think we've already done that. 
but um, to make it very clear that no one is trying to take anyone's property. The town is not trying to advance on anyone's property. We're all very sensitive about our property. It's our property. We're already encroached on so much. But it is very important what you're talking about here. So I would think that that would be a good way to approach it, is to get the natural vegetation. I have talked to Doug Guy, who's a fantastic garden. You probably all know him. And he has talked about many plants that could be placed on the shoreline. I saw in the huge rainstorm last year, I saw a lot of stuff going into the lake because of a landowner near um, in the camps over there decided that he would go down there and weed whack the whole shoreline. Well, before that, I saw that grass and all holding back the rain. I, I witnessed it personally. That grass was holding back the rain from going over the edge. Once he weed whacked that, um, right down it went. Right down, made a nice little river, right down into the water. And I saw the, um, the erosion out in the water as well. And it went quite a ways out. And I wasn't happy to see that. So the weed whacking really made a big difference. The vegetation, just let the natural vegetation grow along the shoreline. Plant some more if necessary. Uh, that would be a you know benefit to the wildlife, to the birds, and you know all the pollinators that we have, the bats. And if I could echo what Tammy said, I would I would prefer to have encouragement than than, than more rules and laws. I think the vast majority of people who own the property around the lakes care about it. Right. Uh, I don't think anyone is intentionally being malicious. There may be a little bit of ignorance out there, but I think that's changing. So I kind of, kind of party says, why, why burden people who already care about about the lakes I mean, if education is best practice? And furthermore, I think at some point you got to think about tax revenue. I need to put it in those terms, but. <clears throat> you know, the more we restrict the rights of, of uh, lakefront uh, owners, the, the, the less they're going to want to own that lakefront. I mean, so, so you're saying that with our mowing, we're, we're in effect, the, that mowing thing is restricting? Uh, no, I, I'm not really referring to the mowing. I think I think that, that um, just as, as a general nod to most of the owners, I don't think are, are, are intentionally trying to do anything malicious, and I, I actually think if you, the amount of lawn that is around those, at least it's on big lawn, it, it really isn't a whole lot. No, I, no, I think <laughs> so I'd rather see education than, than legislation. Right. It, 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 it is education. We, we understand that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a great proponent of the word encourage, mm -hmm. but I am told that we can't use the word encourage in regulations. <laughs> so, in other words, regulations are a shall or a may. Mm -hmm. and so but going out to 250 feet from the water's edge really does swallow up a lot of, of and maybe that's well, the well, remember, the no mow zone is the 100 feet, and we're just, it, it, the, the 150 feet, you can do a lot there. You've got, a, you can clear up to 40%. Mm -hmm. You can have other things going on. Where the biggest concern is, is the 100 foot buffer area. And that's where we have seen where people have been mowing in that buffer. Like Tammy said, the guy that sure, killed terrible, off everything yeah, and then went. So it's the buffer area that's our main concern. That's, that's the dark green. That's right? the, dark. the dark green. Yes. Um, I, I'm a big um, fan of um, encouraging folks to do that. And on the Lakes and Streams Committee, uh, I hope some of you recall seeing um, in prior years, we um, twice a year would send a newsletter to folks uh, about things involving the quality of the lakes uh, and the streams. And with specific regard to Nelson Pond uh, and Number 10 Pond, and I think uh, Curtis Pond, um, we had prepared a best practices flyer, and the hope was that, that the, the landowners themselves would would you know take it on board and if they rented the property that they would post it so that renters would um would understand what is a bad thing to do on the property i, I hope that had some positive impact but you know I mean, probably you know these places better than i do certainly up in this part of the town i don't know whether it's 
change anybody's mowing practices. No, I think some, this guy that's weed whacked, I think that he is like, there's the ignorance, but there's also the willfulness, like to spite anybody, he would, he would weed whack it. So people like that, you just get a collar, a chain, you know, a heavy chain, <laughs> just hook him up, <laughs> drag him behind his car. <laughs> No. Uh -huh. It seems like um, the road issue, which which is a, a big one that we're just looking at it again. If, since the town already has the right to do ditching along the sides of the road, right, which is what you're worried about in front of, and already has the rights to do things with management of vegetation, I just don't see what you're really gaining other than limiting people's property rights by extending across the road. Because the town has the right already to do something on the other side, on both sides. So to manage the drainage. To manage the drainage, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I just, I also yeah. want to say, I appreciate it. Look, I mean, it's clear you guys have put so much time mm -hmm. and research into this, mm -hmm. which I appreciate because, you know, clearly what you're interested in doing is trying to protect our lakes and streams. Mm -hmm. and, and I really, I do thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I do think your charge on the front, your first list of bullets, is tricky because I think you have contradictory bullets. Mm -hmm. And so if your charge has conflict in it, I think that made your job really hard. So to say that you're going to bring us in line with the state and then have another bullet Except that says we're going to extend things. beyond yeah. the state, right. those are contradictory. Well, and so uh, that's okay. that's tricky. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. So, and I, that's we're what bringing saying. it in line with the state from what we have, with the exception <laughs> that we're adding two other things. It's really the flow. Forgive my ignorance. I, I just I don't understand how the process works. So this proposal that you're making is that go to the select board and approve well, it? Well, okay. To the voters this is just an information it, session work? right now. No, right, sure. And we are working on other things, mm -hmm. which are equally as problematic, mm -hmm. in some ways. Um, uh, which will happen is then there will be a public hearing for all of the changes that we want to propose. This is simply one aspect of it. But we realized that it affected a lot of people that live by the lake. So we were just providing this as information as a start. Um, and if we hear something that we think we want to change, we can still make changes because it's still in a draft mode. Sure, but down the road, is it approved by the voters of Cal's? Or yes, yeah. the yes. Board? It no, goes first to a public hearing from planning. <coughs> it goes to the select board. Yeah. They get to do whatever it is they want to do within 180 days. If they approve it, then it goes to the public for voting. We usually and try to do that at town meeting so that it's yeah. all everything's at the same and, time. And we've been working on this so long, some of us are really getting sick and tired of it. So we'd like to, um, ha you know, we're hoping that we can get some, we, we want to work on River Corridor. There's, there, that's the one thing we're working on um, because we need to add River Corridor protection. We have some thought about storm management and erosion control. We, we're not sure whether we're, we're going to go through, we're, we're still evaluating it. Um, and then there's some general uh, wet uh, uh, stream stream <coughs> buffer. The whole issue of the streams, uh, we have we kind of have to rewrite it a little bit. Um, so I would like to have this voted on by next year, which means I we need to have public hearings closer to the end of the year, you know. And and, and so, I, but if we don't, we don't. I mean, my issue is we would rather have quality than push time. Yeah, I would encourage that. And this is a really important part of that process to hear from people and see what the town wants. Isn't Help. weed whacking the shoreline at Mirror Lake that's been being done, isn't that in the zone that needs to not be weed whacked already? You're right. It should be. It's it should, a history of being whacked. So, so, state. Can, so if someone, they were to apply for a permit, that permit would probably say you can't do that anymore. What was it that John was just saying, oh, though? Say. Sorry. The state has a clause in it about grandfather be whacking the person. So they're saying he can keep doing it. And, and I just want to say, too, that the State no, Shoreline, Protec the the state the shoreline Protection Act they has been in place for about five years, and anyone who owns land on the pond should have a copy of, of those standards. Um, they're easy to get. There's a lot of supplementary information about what makes a good planting. There's, there's gobs of stuff, <coughs> mitigation strategies to, to control surface water runoff into the pond. There are tons of resources. So, so as far as the town informing citizens, we'll do our best to get this stuff out. But it's up to the property owners to have a handle on what the standards in the Shoreline Protection Act are. And to add to that, we are looking at when we format our 
uh, our regulations, if in fact there is something that the state has out there that is gives guidance, like what kind of plants and vegetation to have, we would put it in there as a hook so that you could hook on it and you know click on it and it would go to that form. And so we want to be able to have an interactive document I, I as much as possible. The, have you heard of the Federation of Lakes and Ponds? Very powerful, big organization. Mm -hmm. Federation of Lakes and Ponds? Yeah, Conservation okay. Commission gave us the link to that. Yeah, you want us. Yeah. They've got it all. Homeowners are saying, actually, the species, the plant, and. and well, all the of state of Vermont them. does too. If yeah. you look on there, I have looked and there's like a list of 20 <coughs> documents that mm. spell out everything and every which way from streams and wetlands and, and lakes and what kind of vegetable vegetables, <laughs> vegetative management. Sorry, my husband planted his tomato seeds. I guess that's fine. Right. I have a um, question on the um, village thing, that 400 feet. Yeah. I think traditionally, I mean, Number 10 Pond is Number 10 Pond because the Number 10 schoolhouse was, I guess, somewhere out near where Fred's house is now. Yeah. So that would have traditionally been part of the, the village. So the 400 feet from North Callis Road seems like it truncates part of what probably used to be considered village. I can't find any written documentation that told me how big the village district was, but it's clear from measuring. And the, the, what I'm seeing here is what's been in our zoning regulations since they established these districts. I was able to measure it, and it was consistently 400 feet from North Callis Road. So I just extended that. You're suggesting that maybe well, that, it should that, also that be... Well, that works below, south of the junction with number 10 Pond Road. But you're when saying you maybe... get up into the village itself, I would suggest a little more. Which way? Over here? No. Well, maybe over there, yeah, because certainly there's some houses up in there that are part okay, of the no, village. Well, that's interesting. Anyone else feel strongly you, about expanding the village? If you look at what is village? traditionally village, some of the houses... Um, Fred up Bushway. on the right hand side yeah. there and over at Fred Bushway. That's Fred Bushway. Yeah. So you're talking it's, about the right. to the right. east? Right. Both, east and west. Sort of including a little a little more make the village because it kind of right. gets skinny at that end. Yeah, it's very skinny. <laughs> and that was really the center of the village, so it's kind of counterintuitive that the, the village is narrowest where the actual village was. Well, Chris and Stephanie's house used to be the store. Yeah, and that's right. not incurred in the village. Yeah. 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 Their barn is, but not their barn. Their barn is because it's near Yeah, so I think it should be included so. some on the right <laughs> and some on the left to make North Hill's awesome village a little faster. So it's almost straight yeah. up behind their house, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Really so you're saying to expand it? Yeah, ex village. expand the, the North Callis Village a little bit. To how far? You want it to go to the other road? Where, where road would you like to see it go to? Hey. Like Chris, Chris and Stephanie's, this, this part should probably village. There are houses in there, and maybe a little bit in here, because uh, the old schoolhouse was somewhere in this area. So it's just a, a minor cosmetic. Uh, Addition. <laughs> yeah, just to make it kind of fit. Uh -huh. But having the, the building that used to be the store and the post office not yeah. in the village is, is really kind of ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Could you show the whole pond? I shall go to the top of Foster. <laughs> okay. Where is your house there, then? The little piece that has the stream in it. Oh, okay. Yeah, up, up, right. up on the side of the pond. Yeah. Yeah. The property is... Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, well, no, it's, no, up, no, no. it's up further. Up further? Up further? Much further. Yeah. Go back. It's way up. Well, who, there's that little who are we talking about? Ben, ben's place. Oh, Ben's. Ben I, Karen, I thought we were... Ben and Karen's. Ben and Karen's. What, you're up here? No. no up make, about, show the whole pond. Ben and Karen are up a little bit more. The up. See the little stream that comes in? There. That one. No. For, yeah, yeah. Right that was. Right. Yeah. That's yeah, right place. here. That stream is, is to the right. Yeah. Okay. House is facing house. And behind there, there's a little beaver pond that arises and disintegrates every five or ten years. According to the winds of the beavers and the weather. The beavers. <laughs> <laughs> Here, 
Well, I don't have a, I don't have all all this stuff on this one particular map, but I have a strong suspicion that when there's when there's a stream that goes along and stops and then starts again. I've got a feeling there's like a little wetland kind of thing. Well, it right probably here. goes under the road. Oh, yeah. uh, the road's ben right, the road's a right here. I think there's, there's a, a wetland there's a, in there. Yeah, yeah, there's a wetland right there. It's a paper pond. So yeah. it, it, turn the wetlands on. So I, don't, I don't have wetlands on. Oh, you don't on. have them on this one? Mm -hmm. ah, okay. <laughs> then it gives them all the ideas of what we have to go through when we look at wetlands. Ah. I've probably got it on another map, but I don't probably. know if I want okay. more. Yeah. There's an interesting delta at the end well, of that stream that yeah. yeah. illustrates in some ways videos. what happens when yeah. there's uncontrolled <laughs> water going into a lake. Yeah. It's, it spreads out quite a lot and it's all mostly yeah. sand. Yeah, because right. there's, right quite, there's quite there's a, right at that little stream, there's quite a delta that goes out into yeah. the pond. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, there is. Right. Yeah. I'm almost at the point. Yeah, silt. Did you write by it probably to go out to Whenever the beaver dam breaks, Concerns. We've, we've written down um, the mowing, the road issues, uh, extending in, the North Callis Village, and extending the North Callis Village to make it prettier. <laughs> it well, more village. More well, village. Yeah. 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 How do you propose to enforce this? The way we do it now, <laughs> just by through education and and anger anger neighbors. That angry neighbors, that's pretty much it. Really. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. People come in and ask for a permit, and I'll talk to them about it, and we'll, we'll see what the regulations allow. Otherwise, there are, there are, there are people who, who don't understand that there are limitations to what they can do in Shoreland property, mm -hmm. and they get found out when someone rats them out. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah. That's just the way the system goes. Right. Unfortunately, that's the way it works. Well, there's, there's, there's no one out riding around. Right, there's no one. Right. There's no zoning place. No. no. And so, yeah. I just had a, a permit where the people yeah. cut down. This is a 1.3 acre parcel for a new a new place mm -hmm. in the 250 foot zone. Oh man! They cut down almost every single tree. Okay. Then Lindsay Miller showed up with it from the state. With it from the state. Yeah. And they got permission to cut the rest down. How'd they do There's that? a big loophole. It's called a hazardous tree. Every oh. tree's hazardous. Oh, my goodness. Oh, OK. Now, look, if you want to give me your email address and you want to see the draft of the language, I can mail it to you with what we have, if, that, if you'd like to do that. And I can, can, I can just email put, you. Put, put a link on Front Porch Forum or something? There you go. Yeah. Put it on their website. We could put it on the website too. We could put it on the town's website. Yeah, actually. That would be better for public. Right. Yeah, yeah, because I Easier. noticed that East Montpelier does that. They put their drafts on the town <laughs> website, and I'm going, oh, that's not a pretty good idea. I was looking idea. for it, and I had to call John and he emailed it to me, but it'd be nice if it was on the town site. Okay. Yeah. We, we yeah. will put up yeah, a place that. that says what we're working on so that you can look at what we're working on. And some of the maps? Yeah, I was going to say, can you link the maps? The maps are a new link to the maps. Or a screenshot um, <coughs> on the website. These yeah. maps are different than what we have on the interactive map on um, the website. Yeah. Um, hmm. The interactive map, I mean, this, the interactive map actually on the website does have a lot of this, but what John has used is, you know, we play a lot of what if. Mm -hmm. Well, but if you just like a screenshot, it wouldn't have to be interactive for the user. Yeah, John, I could do pick the most probable yeah. things, did a screenshot, and then just said, yeah, hey, this like is what the we con looked at. The contrast of the old and the new. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Old and the current. And we know we'll both. have to do that for public hearings. Yeah. 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 But so, yeah, you're right. We should go out and put it out on the <coughs> website. Yeah, this is earlier. amazing work you guys have done. Yeah, it is. Really. It's a completely different crowd than, and we've done this now pretty much 
Yeah. You're the third group. We yeah. Curtis uh -huh. Pond people have attended meetings, we and then we went Adam to Adamant. And we did Adamant. Mm -hmm. I missed okay. the Curtis Pond. Well, it, they came at, a, at they one came of our meetings. And, yeah. And, oh, okay. and uh, with, with, tied with conservation and lakes and streams and, and Curtis a lot. Of, so Curtis Pond was represented on that. No, a lot of a lot of land landlords are out of state, out of town. Right, yeah. right. They're not even here. You know? Right, that's right. Not possible for them to right. hear. Here. So, are you saying we need to do this in the summertime when right. they're all here? It would probably be a good thing, just okay. because. Yeah. Especially for Nelson's pond. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Could we have town hall? Yeah. They do pay well, taxes. We can initiate the town hall. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> they don't get to vote, but they do pay taxes. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Uh, is there any other thing? I I think this is. I'm just going to say something from my from my gut here, and that is, you know, our family owns most of the eastern side of mm -hmm. uh, Number Ten Pond, and has for seven generations. We've kept it the way it is because we wanted it that way. And the public reaps the benefit. But what goes up my you know what sideways when people tell me what I can do even though I'm already doing it. So that, you know, it just bothers me. Maybe that's the old Republican in me, but that's where I start to get a little upset. Our family has cut ice out of that lake, fence posts out of the cedar. You know, we've made our living around it. We don't do that anymore because we're not dairy anymore. But it's, it's property rights and it's how people feel. And I think you need to take that into account. Changing buffers and changing, changing rules just because you think you need to. The state already has rules, and I've been through them to change a camp. And I found it not too onerous. But to have to go to the, to the state and then to the town, then to the DRB, kiss the ring, it gets to be a little bit much. That's where I have a problem. Well, it wouldn't affect anything on Nelson, Foster Homestead at Nelson. That's ours in the I'm state. I'm speaking for me, and I'm speaking for people who were on the other side, who on the other side of that road. That, yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, and Bill. my cousin Peter, who also is going to get affected now because you're going to cross the road there. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I'm not saying this to be argumentative. I'm mm -hmm. trying to understand. And you uh, gotta remember, 75 years ago, there was no trees here. Yeah. Right. None. Of you can look Zero. right around the lake and foster homes. There's a lot of sheep. Right. A lot of sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Lots. Right. I mean, you could walk all the way from Kent's Corner to Nelson Pond. No like trees. Like that. Yeah. It was open. Mm -hmm. Okay. And these ponds are beautiful and they're healthy, and we've been um, treasuring them and caring for them. We're not saying you haven't. We're just saying that we're, we're just making our buffer the equal to states. That's all. Well, then you don't need to do it. If the state has it, then you don't need to do it. It's but redundant. But we have to find a way when somebody says they want to build something, we, have, we want to know that it's within our guidelines as well. But you're, you're, ex, you're extending them beyond the state. I think that's probably what how we feel. I think that's what in the two Bill areas, is saying. In the two areas relative to the road and impervious surface, those were the two areas that we differ. So I'm hearing you object to that. Okay. For what it's worth, we've got a 50-foot no-mo buffer right now in our current regs, and that already crosses public roads at the, where, where the road is closest. So we already, in effect, have zoning that crosses the roads, and technically should would tell a person you can't cut, I don't know how big the swath would be. Um, and that would be five feet wide, but we've got, we've got stuff already. But there's a loophole, so no one can stop someone from weed whacking the shoreline near a lake. No, that's a grandfather well, yeah. I don't know if you call it a loophole. Well, he just said it's a loophole in the state law. Well, it would be the definition of the public road yeah. too. We can't do that. No, but find right. out what the state really means by public road. A public road, by this, we have. A public road is class one through four. Okay. Anything that's listed as private is private. Okay. So along Curtis Pond, those are private roads. Okay, right. I guess I was confused Camp by road. what he was talking about, that Florida thing. You know, what's, yeah. what's, mm -hmm. I guess that confused me. The, the road at, uh, at uh, Woodbury Lake, that's a private road as well. Right. Yeah, I would say that. You'd also have to consider, um, you know, safety and property. You know, you'd have to allow for some way for somebody to 
get permission to remove, you know, I'm just thinking bigger trees or something that could potentially fall in the camp or fall in the That's that language is in there, the state. Yeah, yeah. 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 You should read the state guidelines. They're very, yeah, they're pretty, pretty easy to read. Yeah, yeah I've read them. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank 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 you.